There are now about 44 million more men than women in India. Every year, around 2 million women go missing in India. The reasons? Sex-selective abortion, disease, neglect and inadequate nourishment. In some cases, it had also been on account of infanticide. If a female child is born, I mean, uh, she is killed. But now with the advent of technology, what has happened is the girl is killed in the womb itself. And, and very uh, ironically, womb is today one of the most unsafe places for a girl child. The strong preference for boys has given criminals and touts a lucrative opening. Abortion clinics have mushroomed in the bylanes of congested towns and cities. Delhi, the Indian capital, many among the well-off and educated city dwellers suffer from a gender bias. 40-year-old paediatrician Mitu Karana in Delhi knows all too well what it means to be subjected to such discrimination. Dr. Kurana's travails began in 2004, soon after she married a leading orthopedic surgeon. All hell broke loose after a year when Dr. Kurana conceived twins. My mother-in-law and husband started demanding a sex determination test. They were like, uh, both daughters are not welcome. If it's one, it was a different issue, but if there are two, then there can't be two daughters. Dr. Kurana stood firm, refusing to undergo a scan to determine the sex of the babies. So I was really shocked. It was a cultural shock. I said, no way, I'm not undergoing this test. So they, I mean, initially they tortured me for it. I did not agree to it. Then they uh, deceived me into it. They knew I'm allergic to egg. They gave me a cake with egg. And uh, once I developed allergic problems, I was taken to a hospital where the doctor, by uh, taking advantage of my sedation, he did a fetal scan. The, uh, when we came back home, my husband started demanding an abortion. Fortunately, she managed to call her father who rescued her. She stayed at her parents' house where she gave birth to two lovely girls. Dr. Kurana made a final attempt to make peace by going back to her in-laws hoping that the babies would be accepted. But instead of embracing them, her mother-in-law kicked one baby down the stairs, hoping she would die. When I turned back, I saw my mother-in-law kicking this carrying cot, which was on the stairs, down the staircase. It was only because there was a buckle and there was a blanket around the baby, the baby escaped. But at that moment, I knew that if I protest, if I say anything, all three of us would be killed. So I just took both the daughters, I sat in the car and I came back to my parents. Dr. Kurana has fought back, filing a case against her husband and in-laws. Her two daughters are now growing up as beautiful young girls. When one of them wants to be a judge, one of them wants to be a doctor, they're having absolutely normal life. machine <laughs> Pay it's not just the rich and educated who seek abortion of female fetuses. The demand for such services is spreading to towns and villages as well. Ultrasound facilities are offered in big hospitals and narrow bylanes, and some of them are run by profit-seeking doctors and touts. Alarmed by the rising incidence of abortion of female fetuses, the government enacted a law making prenatal sex determination illegal. But the practice has simply gone underground. The modus operandi of the racketeers is simple. A pregnant woman meets a tout, either under coercion or deception by her husband and the in-laws. The tout takes the woman to a small clinic, the doctor does a scan and the abortion 
pocketing a huge fee. Rajan Chowdhury heads an NGO that's at the forefront of the struggle to save female fetuses. Over the years, 54-year-old Chowdhury has carried out multiple raids to dismantle sex selection rackets and arrest doctors and touts running illegal abortion clinics with the help of the government and the enforcement agencies. He persuades an expectant mother to work as a decoy for the team. The woman and her decoy husband, an undercover police officer, visit a small clinic in a by-lane. The doctor does a sonography scan and tells the couple that it's a girl. The conversation is secretly taped by undercover police officers and activists. The doctor is arrested and policemen seize the sonography machine closing down the clinic. आंकड़ों के हिसाब से जितनी बेटियां पहले जन्म ले रही थी उनसे हम आउटपुट में कह सकते हैं कि राजस्थान में दो लाख बेटियां एक्स्ट्रा जन्मी हैं जो 2011 के आंकड़ों में भी उनको खत्म किया जा रहा था। There are others who have joined the struggle to save unwanted girls. Social worker Devendra Agarwal is one of them. About 12 years ago, Agarwal was deeply disturbed by the news of newborn girls being dumped in garbage dumps and drains. Agarwal placed baby baskets and cots outside his office and ashram and put up posters requesting mothers to leave their unwanted girls in the baskets. Agarwal, with the help of the state government, has now set up around 70 baby baskets or cradle points all over the state. A bell is connected to the basket rings whenever a baby is placed in it, alerting nurses who are on 24-hour standby. The baby is then given emergency medical care and saved. Hamant Maru and his wife Kavita wanted a child for a long time, and then Agarwal's ashram proved to be heaven sent for them. There they found little Janisha, who was dumped in a basket in freezing temperature when she was just a few days old. <laughs> So we have family members who agree with us, we have set up a girl. We see in India that girls are killed in the cook, or they are killed or left them. So we don't have any difference between girls or girls. So that's why we feel good that we have adopted a girl because we have adopted a girl. When Janisha came to our life, she became a part of our life. She feels like I have all the happiness in the world. She has come to me in the world. She has come to me in the world. अगर मैं सोचता हूँ अगर मैं अगर लड़का भी एडॉप्ट करता तो मुझे इतनी खुशी नहीं मिलती जितनी मुझे एक लड़की को एडॉप्ट करके मुझे वो खुशी मिली है।